This is an architecture diagram that Microsoft shares how, uh, on utilizing the Azure uh, private DNS resolver. Uh, this is for all the DNS routing uh, that you want uh, without having a prop, you, know, you know, without the need of having a DNS server. So you can use this pass service to resolve all your uh, DNS. And uh, yeah, so uh, what happens in this is you create the resource with an inbound and outbound subnets within your hub network and the VPN gateway as usual uh, sits within its own subnet. So all the requests that land uh, for the VPN through the VPN gateway uh, use this private DNS resolver to route to uh, you know particular private endpoints. So yeah, so this is the uh, architecture diagram that Microsoft shares. Uh, very, uh, I'll, I just created a quick one. Uh, for our purpose, what we're gonna do is we'll create an Azure SQL database, uh, and then we'll have our own virtual network where we'll have the VPN gateway, an Azure DNS private resolver, a private DNS zone for our database uh, .NET, uh, and a VPN gateway and a VPN uh, client on my machine. So what we're gonna do is we'll privately connect to this Azure SQL database using the private endpoint. So all of these components have been created. Uh, you can see one of my previous videos. Uh, in this video, I'll just quickly create Azure SQL database and then create the private endpoint. And we will use that private endpoint uh, uh, to connect. So let's go to our Azure portal and I'll quickly create an Azure SQL database. I am fast forwarding this so uh, while uh, I create this database while it's creating uh, we can talk about what's actually happening so when you uh, disable the public access to Azure SQL database which is obviously a security practice and you should never have it uh, you need a private you know you need uh, to resolve that private uh, endpoint right so the private IP that gets created you should be able to resolve to that otherwise you won't be able to connect even if you have a vpn you need that is uh, the resolution to for the resolution to work you need a dns server so uh the sql server that i'm creating right now is with public access and first we'll connect using the public endpoint and then we will disable the public endpoint and uh, it will start failing it won't connect and then we will create the private endpoint and use the setup that we have seen earlier using a VPN client and VPN virtual network gateway, the private DNS resolver and the private DNS zone. So this database is getting created. Let me quickly connect to that database. Uh, it's currently in progress. Uh, let me pass forward that. But all in all, this, this video is just to have a have an overview of how you can connect an Azure SQL database using the private endpoint. The deployment is in progress. So the resource is now ready. Let's go ahead and connect to this Azure SQL database using Management Studio. Let's uh, have a quick look. That's our server i have disabled sql authentication so i can only access using my uh, azure active directory or enter id uh, i have obviously allowed selected networks let me gather the server name i will go back to sql server management studio and i'll connect using azure active directory universal with mfa and that works because i have allowed my public ip and the list of ips so i've right listed my ip that's why i'm able to connect but uh in a very in a secure environment uh, this is the minimum you should have you should never select that select from uh, you know allow all networks that should never be selected uh, so yeah, that that works that is perfectly fine you can see uh, the database and uh, let me now go and disable the public access. So I'll go to my SQL Server. Let's go to Security, Networking, and Disable Public Access. 
So what this would do is uh, now we will not be able to connect this Azure SQL uh, server using the public endpoint. So if I refresh, it should fail. And you can see an instance specific error occurred. So private endpoint is what we need to use. Let's go ahead and create a private endpoint. I'll select the resource group. I've got a networking resource group where my private DNS private resolver and all the networking components reside. I'll give a private endpoint name. The region UK South, that is good. And the sub resource, it will be SQL Server. Virtual network is fine. And you can see my subnet is already there, a private endpoint. And integrate with private DNS zone. I will let it create the private DNS zone. In hub and spoke, uh, you know, uh, topology, you will have all your private DNS zone in hub, and they will be virtual network links to all the virtual networks. But in our case, we are uh, not doing the hub spoke. We are just using a single VNet just to see the overall working of a DNS private uh, private DNS resolver. So the private endpoint is getting created. Once this is created, uh, we should be able to, uh, you know, connect our SQL server again. And if I go ahead and refresh, it should be able to connect because now we'll have a private endpoint and the private endpoint will have a NIC attached, which will have, which will have a private IP and that IP will get resolved via our uh, Azure private DNS resolver and since we already have our VPN client installed and all the VPN uh, point to site set up we should be able to resolve that successfully so this is done our private endpoint has been created successfully let's go ahead and have a look at the private endpoint this is a private endpoint, go to settings, DNS configuration. You can see the network interface. This is our private IP 10.0.4.6. That's our FQDN and this is the private DNS zone. If you go to our private DNS zone, we can see an entry for our Azure SQL Server. So this is the server name, the logical server name and the IP. And if you see the virtual network link, we already have a virtual network link for our virtual network and yeah so the setup looks good uh, in terms of private uh, dns zone and we already have our private azure pri private dns resolver this is our azure vpn client we have already connected uh, we have a video on managed instance where we created all of these components so you can have a look there If we go to our networking, so this is uh, the virtual network gateway. And if we go back to our networking, other networking resources, that's our DNS, all the DNS configurations and the private resolver. So this is the DNS private resolver. And you can also see the private DNS zone for private link dot database dot windows dot net. That's what our SQL Server Azure SQL database will use. So everything looks good. This is our server, and if we do a quick NS lookup, let's do an NS lookup. That's the database. So without providing the uh, private DNS zones inbound IP, we get the public IP. But if now I provide the Azure uh, private DNS resolvers in uh, inbound IP, I should be able to get the private IP of my, so 10.0.2.4 is my uh, inbound IP for the private DNS resolver and you can see 
now it gives me the private IP that is 10.0.4.6 so it is successfully resolving to the private IP of our Azure SQL database the private endpoint that we created and the uh, network interface that is that it is attached to so all looks good and we should be able to resolve this is our private endpoint and if we see the private IP that's the 10.0.4.6 that's exactly what we got in our NS lookup so we should be good there okay so now let's quickly check our virtual network if we see the go to DNS servers we uh, currently have the default we will need to change it to custom with the inbound IP for our private the DNS resolver which is 10.0.2.4 so that is done that's saved so the private DNS resolver was able to find the private IP but until and unless you have the DNS servers uh, correctly listed in your virtual network you will not be able to connect to that resource so once this is done we should be able to connect to the we should be able to refresh this connection this is it might take some time to take effect let me just click ok and try again our VPN is connected, uh, private DNS resolver is resolving fine. Let me refresh again. Yep, so it's all good. It is working as expected. Let's quickly click on database and the tables. So this is all working as expected. All the uh, traffic is going via our VPN client, that's Azure VPN client. It's going to this virtual network gateway that sits in its dedicated subnet, that is gateway subnet. This is our point to site VPN configuration. If I so show you a point to site sessions, uh, there should be one session running which uh, is the current session that we have used to connect the SQL server so that's our connection and so yeah that that's that's all uh, we have the point to site VPN we have Azure private DNS resolver that's helping resolve all our private endpoint private resources this is the private DNS resolver, the, in, well, in the inbound endpoint, that's the inbound uh, endpoint that we used as a DNS server in our VNet. And yeah, it, it makes our life so much easier. You do not need to have a virtual machine with all the DNS configurations that you, you don't need an on-prem or Azure DNS servers to do all the routing. Uh, everything is taken care of by that past service so it, it is really uh, really really uh, helpful to and easy to set up this and yeah then that's all from today's video I hope you enjoyed it and uh, uh, this is this is the way you need to uh, deploy your resources secure all of it do not use the public endpoints make sure that you use only active directory authentication or the entry ID authentication so all these are security measures that you need to take whenever you create any you know uh, public cloud resources and uh, that will save your life and that will help you mitigate the security risks associated with the private uh, the public endpoints so yeah thanks for watching and keep supporting